Welcome back for another video, guys. This is Gene, and I wanted to do another uh, video response to a great question that I got from Frank White here. Frank asks, does not the PC-12 use reverse thrust along with beta in general for slowing down and taxing, even on long runways? It would seem to me the reverse thrust would preserve the brakes and therefore be encouraged. So that's a great question, and uh, I thought I would show you a little segment of a GoPro uh, head mount video that I shot here in the legacy PC-12. Can't show you the full thing because like I mentioned in my last video the, the blur tracker has a hard time following the in number placards around but I can show you this little segment here because I didn't move my head around too much. <laughs> so I'll hit play on this and show you in a second. Um, but to answer the question, the PC-12 you very rarely use reverse thrust on landing and there are a couple reasons for that but I would say <clears throat> I only used reverse thrust uh, thrust in the PC-12 and maybe one out of 20 landings. Now you do use beta every single time and beta is sufficient to slow the airplane down without really even touching the brakes. So the brakes in the PC-12s that I uh, fly, they, they last forever and because you really don't use them much. They're used primarily for differential braking, for cornering and turning on the ground while you're taxiing. And just a little bit here and there, um, on the landing roll at the very end of the landing roll when you're slowing down to make your your turn off of the runway and onto a taxiway so but that's really it you don't touch the brakes hardly at all except on a short field uh, and even then you don't use them a whole lot uh, and when when you're flying the pc-12 so beta is sufficient and part of the reason for that is because the touchdown speed is so low in the pc-12 it's usually somewhere around 70 knots and you have to be at a reverse by 40 knots. So you have like a 30 knot window uh, after the mains are on and you really don't want to go into reverse thrust until you've derotated it and the nose wheel is on the runway. So you're looking at less than 30 knots of um, deceleration where you have reverse thrust available. And uh, it's just not really necessary. So um, I'll show you, let me hit play on this video and, and uh, you'll see what I mean. So uh, you can see my approach speed there is about 80 knots and we're just slightly fast according to the AOA over here. You can see I'm a little fast, a little above the donut and that's because there was a little bit of wind shear around on this day. But I want you to notice the touchdown speed here when I get the mains on. <clears throat> so we're about 75-ish knots right there and I'm going under the flare here. So we're already below 70 knots and I haven't even touched down yet. <laughs> So there you go, the mains just got on right there. I was like, you know, 60, 65 knots. So it's really, really uh, low speed when you touch down. So here I'm in beta, and uh, incidentally, I want to show you guys this too. This has nothing to do with reverse thrust at all, but I think it's cool to watch this. Uh, watch the, uh, the cabin rate of descent gauge over here, and as soon as the wow switch engages, which is the weight on wheel switch when the main gear struts compress, on main gear touchdown, watch what happens here. Right there, big descent for a couple seconds and that's because the outflow valve opens and it just dumps the cabin of any pressurization. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I digress. So yeah, here I'm in beta and I'm just rolling out. I'm not touching the brakes at all. <clears throat> Didn't use any reverse whatsoever and you can see I'm struggling to even make it up to this taxiway exit right here. So. <laughs> Uh, you know, usually you don't, not only do you not need reverse, you don't even want to use reverse because the airplane is rolling so slowly after touchdown that you're kind of hustling to get up to the taxiway exit to, to uh, clear the runway, especially if there's traffic behind you. So, um, so yeah, it's just not really necessary in the airplane, uh, like I said, unless you're on a short field. Um, also in the PC-12, the, and I'm just cleaning up after landing there, um, the main tires are 60 psi so the airplane was designed to operate <clears throat> on uh, unimproved surfaces and that means grass runways gravel runways unpaved surfaces so the main tires are very cushy and you get a lot of surface friction and those help slow you down as soon as those are on the runway and uh, you know it's kind of a big boxy airframe quite a bit of drag and, and like i said before the flaps are big and draggy so uh, there's no shortage of drag, uh, both from the airframe itself and also from those those main gear tires with the friction you're getting there. So uh, beta is is plenty to slow the airplane down. You really don't touch the brakes hardly at all. Um, now, it's also interesting to note that on 
uh, most light jets, and a good example is the, uh, the PC-24, you, you do not have thrust reversers. So you have thrust reverse on the PC-12 because the, you know, anytime you have a turboprop and the prop can go into beta, you're, you're already there. All you have to do is spool the engine up a little bit to start to generate more reverse thrust. So they just throw it on. It's kind of already included. With a turbofan engine, it's different. It's, a, it's an independent system that has to be installed onto the engine. The engine has to be designed for that. So you have to have cascade vanes or you have to have uh, the, the bucket style reverse thrusters. It's a system unto itself that adds expense and it adds weight and it adds maintenance and complexity of something that can fail and all that stuff. So most light jets that have low touchdown speeds like the PC-24 do not have thrust reversers because for the same reasons that I mentioned, you just really don't need them to slow down you know, only 20 or 30 knots. So the PC-24 actually touches down a little bit faster than the PC-12 does, uh, but it still doesn't have the thrust reversers. So um, now uh, Frank also mentioned that um, obviously the, the reverse thrust will save your brakes a little bit, and that's true, and that's a good point, and that's why on larger aircraft, so just to use, the, you know, in the airlines, the part 121 environment, large category, uh, transport category jets, that have thrust reversers. Those airlines will typically have in their FOM, which is their flight operations manual, a requirement for the crew to use reverse thrust or at least open the, the thrust reversers on the landing rollout to save wear and tear on the brakes. And they do that, but they don't always necessarily spool up in reverse thrust. Uh, often reverse idle is enough. So what reverse idle does is it gets rid of any forward residual thrust that's fighting against the brakes and the deceleration efforts uh, but you don't necessarily have to uh, spool the engines up in reverse so sometimes they do sometimes they don't uh, i'm also uh, type rated on the citation excel and on that airplane it does have thrust reversers and again kind of like in the pc-12 um, you don't, you don't really use a lot of reverse thrust. The touchdown speed is certainly a little higher than a PC-12, but it's not super fast. <clears throat> and in that airplane, I would touch down <clears throat> and deploy the thrust reversers, and usually I would just leave them in, in reverse idle. Uh, every now and then I would spool them up a little bit depending on the, the runway situation. But, um, you know, reasons not to use reverse thrust are that uh, it's, it's noisy, it vibrates the airplane, uh, it's not as comfortable or pleasant for the passengers. And in the case of a turboprop like the PC-12, if you uh, spool up in reverse, you get a, a pretty good amount of torque. And so it makes tracking the, the runway centerline a little bit squirrely. So, uh, and then not to mention again, the, the concern about blowing FOD and debris around the front of the engine to be uh, potentially ingested into the engine, which can cause damage to the engine, even with the separator open. So, um, so yeah, anyway, I hope that answers your question, Frank. Um, it's there, you know, it's an option if you need it on short fields, but it's not usually something that you need to use. Like I said, in most cases, and I'll rewind this a little bit to show you again, <clears throat> um, you're actually struggling to, to get up to the exit uh, in, a, in a timely manner. So right there, you know, the, the mains are on, I'm in the rollout, and you can see how slow the airplane is going. The taxiway is way up here. <laughs> so the last thing I would want to do is go into uh, reverse right here. Um, sometimes you actually even have to add a little bit of power um, to, to make it up to the exit in, in, in a timely manner. So, um, yep, and you're not, you're not putting any wear and tear on the brakes, I'll tell you that, because you hardly touch them at all. So right here, I might be applying just a little bit of, of right brake just to turn off the runway, but that's really it. So anyway, another great question. Uh, thanks for that, Frank. And please, guys, uh, leave me your questions in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Uh, hit that like button and uh, please subscribe if you are enjoying this type of stuff. And uh, I will see you again on the next video. Thanks.